there's one thing that I can say Ninjago Dragons Rising has been completely nailing so far, it would be its character stories. All the way from the start, Dragons Rising has shown a clear understanding of its characters, both old and new, giving them captivating arcs and pushing them in directions that not only feel innovative and fresh for the show, but also subversive and exciting. I've already made videos talking about Lloyd and Sora respectively, and how their stories so far have already been so impactful and inspiring, but there's still one character left in that main trio that I've yet to really talk much about at all. And that would of course be Eren. And now that Dragons Rising Season 2 has come to a close, I think now is a better time than ever to explore Eren's story, because I think out of all the main characters in Dragons Rising, he has the story that has surprised me the most. I'm not gonna lie, after Dragons Rising Season 1 wrapped up, I wasn't really that invested in Eren as a character. He was likable enough and had a really strong bond with Sora, but the season didn't really do much to flesh him out beyond showcasing hints of his feelings about losing his parents, but in hindsight, what we got here is actually pretty perfect. What's most interesting immediately is how Eren differs from Sora when it comes to how they both see the merge. For Sora, it gave her a chance to escape her old life and find a new and better one. Even before meeting the ninja, she expresses how she's happier after getting away from Imperium and finding the crossroads. Eren, on the other hand, misses what his life used to be like before the merge, and most notably, he misses his parents. Another important and interesting distinction is how both of them feel about the ninja, Sora not really being familiar with them at the start, with Eren idolizing them and being a complete ninja superfan. Eren may be less happy about the merge, but he's way more thrilled than Sora is to become a ninja, because what he has that Sora lacks at the start of the show is hope. He may miss his parents, but he has the hope that one day he will find them again. And as he says, it's the only thing the merge didn't take from him. So that's Eren, right? Just a pure optimistic kid of the group. Well, that's what the first episodes would have you believe. But as the show goes on, it begins to slowly tear away Eren's optimism and hopeful spirit, eventually leaving him in a much darker place than you would have ever expected going in. Season 1 may not have a ton of Eren focus, but what we do get starts to really illustrate the beginning of the heaps of doubt that would slowly begin to form in his mind. It's all small steps here, but everything laid out in these first 20 episodes is super important for understanding his conflict in Season 2, and does a great job at naturally inching him in the direction he would later move towards. Like I said before, Eren at the start of the show is super optimistic and hopeful, despite how much he misses his parents and his old life. He's willing and excited to join the ninja in hopes of finding them again, training every day in hopes of getting better and becoming a stronger ninja. Thing is, Eren already knows Spinjitsu. Well, kind of. He doesn't have it fully down, and he needs a lot of practice, but he knows how to kind of sort of pull it off with no prior training, something that Lloyd claims to have never happened before, causing him to immediately see a bunch of potential in Eren. That, alongside Eren's ability to transfer Spinjitsu to objects, makes it seem as though Eren is being set up to have a clear path. He may not have an elemental power, but he has abilities that set him apart from everyone else, and maybe through his training he would learn to harness those unique skills and potentially become one of, if not the strongest ninja to ever live. He's the main character after all, right? The guy we open the show with, we see how he struggles in the beginning, what he wishes for, what he lost, so it only makes sense to have him grow over the course of the season, have him face trials and learn lessons as he fully learns how to do spinjutsu and unlocks more spinjutsu related skills. Have him beat the big bad in the end and discover that, while he may have lost his parents, he found a new family, making him feel more at home in the post-merge land. But here's the thing, Eren isn't your traditional happy-go-lucky protagonist like I may have assumed from the pre-release marketing and the first couple of episodes. No, Eren is different, and I think his story is one of the best examples of how Dragons Rising in itself is different. This isn't old Ninjago anymore. There are no clear-cut prophecies, there is no destined one, and while there is a sense of found family with the rest of the cast, most notably Sora and Wildfire, the character you would expect the most to fall into this trope doesn't. In fact, he completely subverts it. As the season progresses, Eren doesn't really get any better. It's a choice I initially thought of as a strange and kind of irritating one. Like, how many episodes would go by without one of our supposed main leads figuring out any of his new skills while one of the other main leads was constantly developing and learning new things about herself and her powers? I absolutely adored what they were doing with Sora and even Wildfire, but what they were doing with Eren just felt kind of drawn out and kind of frustrating. But now that we have season 2, I, and I'm sure a lot of others, realize that that's the point. We have ourselves a protagonist in an action show that just 
flat out isn't good at fighting. And while that in itself is incredibly common for many action protagonists at the start of shows, the thing is, Eren just never gets better. He stays bad at spinjitsu, he never learns how to consistently use his spinjitsu throw, and it's not like he has an elemental power to help him in combat. And naturally, this slowly makes him start to feel like he doesn't belong on the ninja team, the people he admires and looks up to, the very people he aspires to be like. And it doesn't help that his best friend, who initially didn't even seem interested in becoming a ninja, seems to really be thriving in this new environment. Sora, unlike Eren, was able to accept the change in her life that the merge brought with open arms, while also eventually learning to accept herself and break away from the parts of her past life before the merge that were holding her back. But Eren, on the other hand, is still stuck feeling as though he doesn't belong. Even with Lloyd reassuring him that he could be a better ninja than he believes, that brief boost of confidence appears to be short-lived as we head into Season 2. Ninja never could- you could be something special. Too bad the ninja hold you back. No, they don't! They're making me better! <laughs> then how come you aren't any better? Not so fast, kid. I was weak like you once. My master found me and taught me the most important thing in this world. Maybe one day you'll find a true master who can teach you the same. I'm gonna help you get better, Roz. And then you're gonna lead me to my parents. Because now, you're the only one I believe can do that. Season 2 Part 1 is where we really start to get more focus on Eren, his struggles in this season building perfectly off of what we saw from him in the previous episodes. Eren starts Season 2 feeling pretty down on himself. Well, for a lot of Season 1, Sora felt as though she was falling behind and that Eren was ahead of her in their training, now that she had unlocked her powers and Eren hadn't even progressed in Spinjitsu, the show flips this dynamic completely, and Eren now feels as though he's the one that's fallen behind. And not only that, but his lack of an elemental power has really started to bother him, feeling as if maybe he'd be stronger if he had one. It's this dilemma, mixed with his frustration with still not being able to track down his parents, that really begins to tear down his typical optimism. Another element of Eren's character that starts to become emphasized here is his tendency to be kind of naive, one of the most notable examples being in episode 2 with the team's encounter with Fadulian. Eren's a smart kid, but when it comes to reading social cues and having fair judgment, he isn't really as equipped to handle these types of situations, which is both a unique character trait that I think a lot of people can relate to, as well as being one that guides a lot of Eren's decisions when we get into the second part of the season. Having this being established early on was a really smart choice, as we really get a better understanding of how Eren's thought process and interpretation of social interactions differs from the rest of the cast making it more believable for him to make the choices he makes later on. And it's just cool to have a character like this that faces these everyday struggles. Seeing a character face unique challenges that relate to struggles people actually face in real life is one of the best parts of Dragon's Rising, and Eren here is no different. And it's also just fascinating to see how these traits play into the rest of Eren's story this season. So as the season progresses, Eren's insecurity about not having an elemental power and failing to improve in his ninja training gets dug in even deeper and deeper. Like, seriously, this set of episodes really puts him through the ringer, and I think that's incredibly important, as having your character reach a low point is a really important part of storytelling, as it builds sympathy for the character while having us eagerly waiting to see how they will end up getting themselves out of the bad situation they find themselves in. From Sora making awesome elemental grappling hooks that Eren can't make use of, to accidentally injuring a noble dragon mentor while trying to master Spinjitsu, it is at this point that he really starts to believe he isn't good enough to be a ninja. All he wants to do is find his parents and have them be proud of the person he's become. But after being scolded by Eagle for not even being able to control something as basic as Spinjitsu, he feels completely worthless. And it's this moment here, when Eren agitatedly refuses Lloyd's offer to help, that really began to paint a picture of where the character was headed, before we even knew it, and how the dynamic between the two would shape out. 
For the first time, this once bubbly and fun-loving protagonist had been beaten down to the point of refusing help from one of the main people he had looked up to for so long, wanting only to be left alone. Not even Lloyd could cheer him up this time, and as we see later, Lloyd's only response here is to just keep giving Eren these glimmers of hope that one day he will be the best ninja to ever live, but to Eren, these statements start to feel like hollow praise. In fact, the idea being put in Eren's mind that he would be the greatest ninja might be holding him back more than it's helping him, giving Eren such a high expectation to live up to, making him even more frustrated when he fails to reach them. And trust me, we'll get into Lloyd's part of this whole thing later, but I think it's interesting to note the subtle divide between the two that begins to take place here, seeing as Lloyd's expectations of Eren may be doing more harm than good. And it's here that Eren's anguish about not meeting the expectations set for him begins to turn into frustration as he loses control in his training with Lloyd, leading to Egalt getting injured and him being demoted to First Fang, only causing his self-confidence to plummet even further as his frustrations grow. Assuming even his best friend is just making fun of him when she's trying to encourage him. His lack of confidence in himself makes him feel even more disconnected from the rest of the team, their support not even feeling genuine to him anymore. The hope he had at the start of the show has been shattered, and all that's left now is a wide open wound for none other than Roz to exploit. So after attempting to rescue Bonzel, Eren would be stopped by Lord Roz, giving us what I believe to be one of the new best scenes in Ninjago history, as this would truly be the turning point for Eren's character. During the season, there had been an emphasis on the difference between strength and motion, acting as two different fighting styles that represent the mindsets that separate people like Roz from people like the ninja. In a fight that parallels the first encounter we see of Roz in the entire show, we truly see how Eren has not only been failing to improve, but has literally stayed the exact same skill level from episode 1, something that Roz points out and uses to his advantage, telling him that the ninja are at fault for his weakness, that strength is the only way to become truly powerful. Roz feels as though he and Eren are one and the same, both feeling weak and hopeless, but unlike Eren, Roz found a master that gave him the power he desired, wishing that maybe one day Eren would find the same. This whole sequence is just fantastic, as it highlights how Roz is able to make use of Eren's weaknesses that the whole season had been setting up against him, truly tackling him at his lowest point and planting seeds in his mind. It's this scene that makes the story pivot from being the typical tale of a protagonist feeling weak and helpless before eventually discovering their weakness and going through an arc of self-discovery that would result in them finally harnessing their abilities to what is actually a story about a weak and helpless protagonist being tempted into taking the easy way out, being so beat down to the point of desperation. And while that desperation hadn't truly set in just yet, it was clear that the path Eren was heading down had forever been altered. But before Season 2 Part 1 has the chance to even wrap up, there's still one more sick twist waiting for us. In a fight during the Part 1 finale, Eren, in a last ditch effort to save Nia, attempts to use object spinjitsu. Sora sees this, and in knowing that it didn't seem to work, manipulates the technology in the object, causing it to seem as if Eren had done it himself. And in not wanting to hurt his feelings, she of course doesn't tell him, meaning that Eren really thinks he did it all on his own, even getting praise from Lloyd after the fight concludes. So not only had Eren been beaten down to the point of believing he may really never improve, but now he was being teased with the idea of potential improvement after all this time, giving him a new wave of confidence that sat atop a flimsy and fabricated foundation, just waiting for the chance to topple and send him spiraling into a new and even even worse chasm of self-doubt. Part 2 of the season opens up with us seeing how Eren is still dead set on finding his parents. He may have been tricked into having more confidence in himself after the fight at the Shadow Dojo, but he's still shown to be really clinging on to the idea of finding his parents, and it's here that we see even more how Eren almost disconnects himself from his supposed found family, blaming himself for not being faster about reaching the information he needed because he was too busy with the ninja, Sora having to remind him how important the mission they were on was. His obsession with getting back a piece of his past life has been causing him to become blind to the life that's right around him, and that blindness would only grow as we enter the tournament of the sources. 
Something that really helps push the story forward is the fact that Aaron's lack of an elemental power allows him to have a unique role at the tournament, being the one tasked with finding the clues about who could have possibly murdered the matriarch dragon. So now Aaron's role on the team wasn't being defined by how well he could fight, but his detective work, not even wanting help from anyone as he is determined to solve this mystery in order to prove his worth to the team. But as the plot progresses, Aaron would end up learning a lot more than he probably ever wanted to know. Another great addition to this story is the inclusion of Aaron's childhood best friend from before the merge, Frack, the new elemental master of Quake. Frack is basically the inverse of Aaron, as he starts the story being just as, if not more naive than Aaron, as he unknowingly works for an evil master, until eventually learning more about him from Aaron, using his newfound better judgement to stick up for himself and his own beliefs, even in knowing that it would get him abandoned by Roz. He's honestly become one of my new favorite side characters because he not only has a really powerful story about sticking up for what you believe in, but it also weaves amazingly into Aaron's story, illustrating how Roz is able to manipulate people into doing what he wants, using their own weaknesses against them. But of course, the problem with that approach, as Frack shows, is that once somebody overcomes those same weaknesses you chose to exploit, in Frack's case is naivety, things can quickly fall apart. While Frack learns to stick up for himself after learning the dangers of his teacher's practices, Aaron kind of does the same, but more so from a place of desperation and frustration than from a place of growth and inspiration. We've already seen how Aaron puts his past life above his current life, creating a slight disconnect between him and the ninja that doesn't really exist for Sora or even Wildfire, both of them now fully accepting their place in the team and considering the ninja their new family, while Aaron still sees his parents as his family and desperately wants to go back to them being a part of his life, not really being fully content with his newfound family. But on top of that, we begin to see how Aaron's frustrations with not getting better and feeling useless results in him wanting to take shortcuts towards gaining strength as was hinted at in the Aaron vs. Ross scene in part 1. Through Frack, Aaron actually puts to use the mindset of strength, it being the first method that actually allows him to do perfect spinjitsu for the first time. It's a celebratory moment for Aaron as he had been training to do this his whole life. But as the music swells into a dark variation of the main Ninjago theme, we as the audience know this is probably the worst way Aaron could have learned this quintessential skill. And from a storytelling perspective, it's absolutely brilliant. The entire show Aaron had been trying to master this skill, but when he finally does it, it's not because he earned it through training or by working through his weaknesses and struggles, but because he gave into them, pushing him further into a darker direction, learning the opposite lessons he should be learning and taking shortcuts. And this all works because it's all intentional. The glimpse of power and opportunity Aaron had just unlocked here is the same thing Roz experienced when meeting his master, that same experience that would lead him down a path of selfishness and manipulation. And it's almost frightening to see at this moment that Aaron now isn't too far off from that as well. One of the most interesting parts about this story that I hinted at earlier is Aaron's relationship with Lloyd and how his trust and faith in him would slowly start to break over the course of the season, as well as his falling out with Sora due to the events of the previous part, culminating in him feeling even more disconnected from the ninja to the point of actually abandoning them in the end. And like I mentioned before, there are many times in the series where Lloyd gives Aaron the confidence that he would become the strongest ninja, but as we get into part 2, Aaron starts putting together even more false promises that Lloyd had been making, promising him that they would find his parents and even promising Nia that they would find Jay. And honestly, at this point, I was kind of starting to think the same thing. Lloyd's journey throughout Dragon's Rising at its core has been about him learning to become a true mentor and stepping up to the role after the supposed loss of Master Wu. And while it's unclear whether or not Wu is planned to return, what is clear is that Lloyd is truly the new master, but with that comes a lot of room to grow and learn, just like Wu had to. And because Lloyd still has room to grow as a mentor, we start to see the first effects of how his mistakes could in turn shape his students. His habits of making empty promises throughout the show, resulting in Aaron catching on and slowly becoming less willing to blindly trust and follow along with everything he says just because he's the Green Ninja. Even during scenes of Lloyd giving advice to other characters, we see Aaron giving him stern looks as if to question the validity of anything he's actually saying. He starts to wonder if Lloyd actually knows what he's doing or if he's just coasting along and playing everything by ear, and it's this distrust from Aaron that begins to create a rift between the two. 
So with this rift in mind, it makes him even more susceptible to manipulation once he encounters Roz again. Roz reveals quite a lot in this interaction, and while Aaron claims to not trust him about anything by the end, it puts all these ideas inside his mind so that when he does discover the truth about these things on his own, he begins to fall deeper into his distrust for his supposed teammates, wondering if maybe Roz was right all along. Through this one scene, Roz is able to completely twist Aaron's viewpoint on what side he should be on before he even comes to the decision himself targeting the forming rifts between him and Lloyd, as well as him and Sora, alluding that they may not be who they seem. Roz knows exactly what Aaron wants, to see his parents again, so blind to everything good that the merge brought to only see it as a bad thing, tempting him with the possibility of it being undone, insisting that they are on the same side and have the same goals. It is one of the most powerful showings of how good Roz is at exploiting our supposed main hero and making him question what he should be fighting for, taking all the building pieces that have been set in place to form such a strong turning point that would go on to change Eren's entire outlook as Raza's claims would be confirmed one by one. And since shortly after this he would learn the power strength could have through Frack, like I mentioned earlier, it was only a matter of time before Eren started to question whose side he should truly be on. It was only a matter of time before Sora's secret was exposed as well. The person Aaron considered to be his best friend admitting to lying to him. That flimsy foundation of confidence I mentioned before finally coming crashing down as not only was his self-doubt at an all-time high, but Roz's claims of not being able to trust even his closest of friends were being confirmed right in front of his eyes. The final nail in the coffin being quick to come as Wu would confess to Aaron and Cole that he indeed was the one to cause the merge, just like Roz had warned was the case. It's like Roz had been playing a perfect game of Jenga, targeting the weakest pieces of Eren's conscience so that when the time came, they would all come crashing down, resulting in Eren having to forfeit the life he had been building up, block by block, and finally choosing the alliance he thought would get him what he wanted. It's such a well done build up as we see every step Eren takes in his progression of losing his faith in the ninja and gaining faith in the enemy. We watch as his positive outlook slowly begins to break, how his relationships with his best friend and mentor begin to be torn apart, and finally how Roz's manipulation convinces him that being with the ninja was a mistake. This was never really a story about a hero down on his luck who had just lost everything. Learning to overcome his struggles and gain an appreciation for his new life and found family, eventually becoming a strong and brave hero and standing up to evil against all odds. No. This is a story about a potential hero who wants nothing but to get what he lost back, being tricked, lied to, and deceived into thinking that everyone is out to get him, and that the only people he can trust are the ones with the power to get him what he wants. In short, this is the origin story of a villain. We are witnessing the formation of an antagonist firsthand. And the fact that this very same character is the one that had been marketed as one of our new main protagonists, the one that would become the greatest ninja to ever live, just a young hero with so much potential, proves to me how much of a subversive masterpiece Eren really is. We as an audience have been tricked, and I honestly couldn't be happier about it. Now of course, is there a large, basically 100% chance that Eren comes to his senses and ends up getting redeemed by the end of Season 3? Of course, and I honestly predict that will indeed be the case, but the fact that the show has even taken him to this point, with this being the clear direction for the character since Episode 1, still shows the willingness to take risks and the commitment to long overarching storytelling that I adore Dragons Rising for. And it's important to clarify that while Eren is heading in the direction of being a villain, that doesn't necessarily make him evil, though only time will really tell what actions he takes next. But it's clear that his goals now are very clear cut. He isn't interested in Raz's quest for endless power and control over the source dragons, he just wants his parents and his old life back, and at this point he's willing to do whatever it takes to make that happen, possibly attempting to undo the merge in the process. 
I'm confident we'll see him act as an antagonist in the next season before coming to terms with the fact that undoing the merge would be an incredibly selfish decision while betraying Roz in the process, but it doesn't change the fact that the show went out of its way to turn one of its most marketable, fun-loving, new young ninja heroes that many kids would most likely aspire to be like at the start of the show into a quintessential antagonist that the ninja will most likely have to face next season. And it's not like big character twists of the past, such as Nia merging with the Seer Zayn dying and rebooted, where they were obviously thought of way later and were really only given the chance to be built up to within the same season they happened, or in Zayn's case, not being built up to, like, at all. No, this was something that was written and planned from the very start, and you can tell, and that is what makes it all the more shocking. A pitch for a character like Eren is typically such a safe one, one that does little to surprise or subvert your expectations, but Dragons Rising decided it would use those preconceived notions to its advantage to tell one of the most surprising character stories I have ever seen in a kid's show, period. It honestly just blows my mind. It's hard to believe that Eren's story in Dragons Rising Season 2 is only a small part of what made this season so special. Which is why it has honestly become my second favorite season of the entire show, right behind Seabound of course. But seriously, I absolutely adore this season and what they did with Eren here made him go from who I thought would just be a serviceable protagonist to one of the most interesting Ninjago characters yet. This whole show has just been such a joy to follow along with, and I honestly just can't wait to see what's in store for Season 3. This probably won't be my only video on the season, as I still have a ton I've yet to talk about, so stay tuned for future videos. But as for now, that's gonna be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a great rest of your day, and goodbye. Oh, also go stream my new music on Spotify and Apple Music, okay bye.